Greetings. I'm Arnold Treeback. For the help of the people viewing this by satellite, the last name is spelled T-R-E-B-A-C-H. Let me summarize three important points right at the beginning of this press conference coming to you from the National Press Club in Washington. Number one, the U.S. has demanded for decades, whatever president was in the White House, that other nations follow its harsh policy of rigid drug prohibition and a harsh war on drugs. Secondly, recently Canada, like some other countries, has strayed from that rigid prohibition theology and is considering decriminalizing or even legalizing marijuana. The result has been a harsh and irrational attack on Canada by leading U.S. drug officials, especially drug czar John Walters, including threats to partially close the borders. However, I submit that if the United States can declare that it believes in the freedom of the people of Iraq to choose an entire new form of government, that it damn well ought to believe that the people of Canada have a right to choose their own form of drug control. Last point, the American press ought to live up to its responsibilities and, con and constantly expose the destructive campaign against Canada, which is based mainly on outright lies and hysteria. Now back to the beginning. Uh, as I said, this press conference at the National Press Club uh, is held at the National Press Club in Washington. It is sponsored by the International Anti-Prohibitionist League and its parent organization, the Transnational Radical Party. This event is being broadcast live by satellite to every television station in Canada and the United States for possible rebroadcast by those stations. As I've said, I'm Arnold Treeback and I'm president of the IAL. It would appear that I'm apparently addicted to supporting seemingly hopeless causes. Now I will confess to supporting another seemingly hopeless cause. Repeal of the United Nations Treaties on Drug Prohibition, treaties which most people aren't even aware of, I'm afraid, so as to allow for the full legalization of drugs along the alcohol and tobacco models. Now, as an old geezer, I have the luxury of remembering other seemingly hopeless causes I supported. For many years, I fought for the end of racial segregation. So I saw with my own eyes, as a federal civil rights official for part of that time, the uh, virulent response to the efforts of Martin Luther King, which I saw with my own eyes, I work with King on occasion. And that response came out, segregation forever. Well, as we know, segregation was not forever. At the very least, we've made major changes in it. For many decades now, I have been working in the field, uh, a closely related field of drug policy reform. When I started out, I supported and worked for changes perhaps in the middle ground. Drugs for addicts, needles for addicts, medical marijuana, decriminalization of possession of small amounts of marijuana. I still support those middle ground measures. I think they're wonderful. However, about 10 years ago, I concluded they were not enough. Not enough for many reasons. Not enough because those middle ground reforms left in place one of the worst ideas ever to come from the mind of a human being. The idea that you could have provisions in the criminal law that make it a, a crime for a person to take into his or her own body certain substances. That's an obscene idea and it's had obscene results for over a century. For these and many other reasons, I'm now working for full legalization of drugs. Of one thing I am certain, drug prohibition will not last that long. It is headed for the dustbin of history. The question is when. In years past, whenever I or other people in the reform movement suggested middle ground reforms, we were accused of being secret legalizers of being part of the legalization lobby. Well, for a long while there wasn't one, but now there is. It's been going for a number of years, and I'm proud to say that I'm one of the leaders of it, 
and that the International Anti-Prohibition League has as its main objective, virtually its own ob only objective, the uh, amending of the UN prohibition treaties and the allowance of various forms of drug legalization in this country and the world. Most of the educational work of the IAL in North America is carried on through the Trevac Institute, a 501c3 ch charitable corporation which willingly accepts donations. We are working closely with David Borden of DRCNet and the Out from the Shadows campaign which seeks to end prohibition in this century. Each of the two main speakers here, and I'm not a main speaker, holds important parliamentary positions in a friendly foreign country. Each has taken official positions advocating fundamental changes in the UN prohibition treaties, and each is working for some form of drug legalization. The Honorable Pierre Claude Nolan is a distinguished Canadian lawyer, governmental leader, and a member of the Canadian Senate a body, by the way, uh, to which he is appointed, and he serves for life. He, he told me, by the way, just a little while ago, that till, that's till 75, whereupon I responded, that's to middle age. Uh, at any rate, uh, he, the most important thing is he chaired the Canadian Senate Committee on Illegal Drugs that produced an historic report in September of last year. Everyone should read that report. It's, it's a model for the future. This massive report was professional, scholarly, objective, and courageous. It called for a complete overhaul of national drug policy, which would approach all drugs within a new and more rational framework, an approach requiring that the policy be based upon objective science and public health considerations. What a revelation. The first sentence of the part dealing with public policy options contained these words. The international drug uh, control conventions, that is the treaties, these ignored treaties, are at least with respect to cannabis, marijuana, an utterly irrational restraint that has nothing to do with scientific or public health considerations, close quote. When the committee did its own research, on these considerations, it concluded, among other things, that marijuana should be legalized, not decriminalized, with a set of new and realistic controls. The reaction of leading U.S. officials, such as drug czar John Walters, sounded to me like prohibition forever. I'd now like to call on Senator Knowles.